everybody and welcome back to the Banner Tree Podcast. It's a little bit different, so if you're on YouTube or Facebook, you can see a little bit different view today. Uh, Ryan is in, in the old studio and, and I'm in my homemade makeshift studio here. And uh, so the reason being is, is that my little one came, uh, Sophie Mae came uh, on March 6th and so it was, uh, it was, it's been a crazy l- little bit and we knew it would be. And so Ryan and I had prepared for, for this and, and our podcast. So that's why we're in different spots. So hopefully it doesn't sound any different to you if you're on our, our podcast platforms. But, um, uh, you know, yeah, Ryan, we're, I, I'm, uh, I'm about an hour away from you and, and hopefully nobody skips a beat here. Hey, I know it's uh, it's pretty crazy that we are able to do this and connect this way, and and we've we've been looking forward to this because we've also talked about bringing other people online and and with us. So it's a great opportunity to be able to do that in this way in this forum. So uh, it is uh, definitely uh, your scenery looks good. I like the banded retreat. Oh, thanks, man. Yeah, it looks great on the back. Yeah, you right like there. that. So that let me see where I'm pointing here. So yep. my, my new little sign there and then the the old uh the lucky photo that I got a pastor, that was actually an accident that I took of him, but ended up being one of my favorites and uh my first mallard there's my COVID mallard right there. You yeah. remember that one, right? Yeah, absolutely. So that was my, my first West Virginia mallard and uh so yeah, I just been been trying to get it all all together but i mean your your stuff looks good as always so oh yeah i've i've tried to put it i've got all our hats kind of right here uh that <laughs> we're still selling and and then my wood ducks and my first duck was a hooded merganser uh um, yeah. yeah i mean so it's cool to be in the studio and have it and have some pictures and it looks great and uh, of course we're vt fans i see the helmet right behind you have to represent oh, yeah. that so <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, uh, so anyway, yeah, we've had some, some life events. I, I'm going to, uh, I'll let you open up with uh, scripture before we do that. Cause I think one thing plays into another here. So, so yeah, go ahead and give us a scripture today. Uh, yeah, the, the scripture I have is in James and, and it's in James chapter one and uh, verse five. And it says, if anyone lacks wisdom, ask of God and he freely gives it. And this is a, this is a passage that I look at a lot because the reality is, is there's a promise in scripture that if we ask God for wisdom, he freely gives it. And so in, in every aspect and area of our lives, from being a dad, from being a, a spouse, to being, you know, a business owner, to being a pastor, whatever you might even, as a listener, whatever your job occupation is, we all need wisdom, and we need yeah. it. And God's promise is if anyone lacks wisdom, and I'll be a man and admit it, I lack it a lot, so... If anyone lacks it, ask of God and he freely gives it. And I'm thankful for that promise. I remember uh, we've talked a lot about, you know, the former lead pastor here who passed, Dr. Hurt. And I always remembered that he would always start off our, our meetings and he would say, God, give me the wisdom to know what to do, how to do it, the way to do it with the resources to do it. And that's a prayer that I found myself praying myself because it is a great prayer because it's straight from scripture if anyone lacks wisdom ask god and he freely gives it yeah and he and dr hurt challenged young men of the church to to seek wisdom and and i honestly believe you know that was i think back i don't remember i think i'm like on 18 years or something coming to the church and i just remember that even from day one pastor would always say that to the young men and and i believe that that we took that seriously and we sought after it and i believe that our church and our community is better today because we we pray for wisdom and continuously pray for wisdom and and again you know back to the life change for me um and having having a daughter and being a dad it's definitely something that you know i'm i'm taking even more serious than i did um there's there's going to be times i'm sure in the in the coming seasons and the coming years that i'm going to really need to lean on the lord for for that help and that guidance and i'll you know, look to his word for all that guidance. And so, so yeah, I mean, that's, that's a, that's a perfect scripture for me, especially this month as we kind of get back in the saddle after, after waterfowl season. And so, yeah, no, I appreciate, I appreciate that uh, scripture. 
Yeah, I, I, I'm, God's word always speaks, you know, it always speaks, and, and I'm thankful for those promises in his scripture. I guess the older I get, the more I've realized, you know, I, I lean on those scriptures, I rely on the scriptures, and try to get in the scriptures daily, and if you're out there listening, and, and maybe maybe you are a believer, or maybe you're not a believer, I would challenge you to start reading God's word, you know, it, it is incredible to begin to see it start in James, James is the wisdom of the new New Testament, and so it's a great chapter to start in. It teaches you how to tame your tongue, and and because yeah. because we speak too much, it, it talks about asking God for wisdom, and it's just great for being a Christian and Christian living. So the Book of James is definitely speaks to us. That's right, man. No, that that's a that's a good word, and um, and you know, so I I know we're we're just looking at uh, I guess when this releases, we're going to be out of of Easter just after Easter, and um. And so I know the church has been rolling and, and getting, I know you've been super busy, just as busy as I am with, with a new child and, and you've had your, your own, uh, own things here. And I, I want to give you an opportunity to just kind of give the testimony about your mom while we're on here too, just, just, to maybe bless somebody and encourage somebody out there that's listening. Yeah. So, um, back in, uh, in, in, uh, March, it'd be, uh, March probably 14th uh they w- my mom she had been gaining a lot of fluid uh she had been in the hospital for two weeks before and so she um she was in control just of heart failure she had a heart episode that had happened she had been in the hospital they sent her home they got a couple pounds of fluid off of her but she was still uh very swelled and all that so what ended up happening is she got up on a Sunday morning and she told my dad hey, um, you're going to have to take me to the hospital. So they went to Wake Forest University, uh, which is in North Carolina. I mean, it's a world-renowned hospital. It's the Atrium Wake Forest Baptist Hospital. It's a teaching hospital. They have teams of doctors. And so on that Thursday, I go down because she was supposed to have a heart cath. They did the heart cath, and they found out that her ejection fraction, which is, uh, if you don't know, it's, it's how much blood pumps from your heart. And it's supposed to be at 70% as somebody healthy like mine and yourself, but hers was at 15% on both sides, which is acute heart failure. Also, she was at, her kidneys were failing, um, and they were pumping her full of the highest dose of diuretics to get the fluid off. The fluid had stalled and um, was not coming off. So the team of doctors comes in and tells us the heart doctor, the palliative care doctor, and the uh, internal medicine uh, uh, doctor comes in, and they tell us that my mom's got three days to three weeks to live. We need to take her home and keep her comfortable, and that we need to, um, you know, uh, put her on hospice and and take her home to pass. And so um, my dad stood up in the middle of the hospital in front of those doctors, and he said, all I know is that I serve a big God. I've heard the report that you have, but um, I, we're going to pray about it, and we're yeah. going to seek we're going to seek God about it. And whether or not you believe in miracles or not, you don't have to. I, my son's a living proof of it, and now my mom's a living proof of it because on day eight or day seven, um, my mom miraculously the fluid started leaving her lungs. We prayed. People all over the world's been praying for my mom, yeah. and and uh, they pushed back some meals and fasted. If you don't know what that is, that's where you you take time and you sacrifice some of your meals or some things that you want, and and you pray to God. And so God heard our prayers, and and he's a he's a great God. He always hears our prayers, and uh, he answered. So my mom's uh, lungs uh, uh, ended up clearing a fluid, and they took her down for a heart cath. And her heart has drastically improved, which is a miracle. And That's then, amazing. and then they took out the IV, and now her by mouth medication, which they said would not happen, is working. So every day she's improving. And when this is recorded, you know my mom's still in the hospital. She still she still is. But when this is released, I'm believing that mom was at church this past Sunday at Easter Sunday, and and that we got to celebrate that together. So uh, yeah. God, God's God's healing my mom he's healed her and uh we're just a living testimony of the goodness of god but i will say this too because people i know out there maybe you're not a believer maybe you don't you know the reality is if god didn't heal my mom he's still good 
That's right. And you've, yep. and you've got to know that because the reality is he's not a genie in the bottle. But I do believe this. We petitioned God. He heard our prayers, and he turned toward us, and he began to heal my mom. And I believe that. And so maybe today you're facing some kind of difficulty or struggle. You can trust in God. He's always there. He's just a prayer away. And if you don't know him as Lord and Savior, no greater time than right after Easter than to accept him as Lord and Savior. He's right there. Just call on his name, and he'll, he'll, he'll be there for you. And if you have any questions, be sure to reach out to me and B. We'd love to hear yeah. from you. Uh, and if you need somebody to pray with, we're here. That's right, man. No, that's it's such a great testimony, and you know when you reached out and and called me about it, I you know I immediately prayed that that this story would become a test, a living testimony. And your mom, I, I'm still praying and and believe that 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 will happen. And and I'm uh, I also pray that those doctors and nurses and the ones specifically who gave the report sees this and and knows that something's different. Um, and I pray that the Lord weighs on uh, his or her heart and uh, and even praying for those people that were around your mom as well so and your dad's a very strong man I, I love your dad I've all, always got along well with, with him and um, awesome man of God and so so anyway now that that's that's a great testimony appreciate you you giving that and being vulnerable enough to to do it um, and hopefully that does speak to somebody but um, as I mentioned before you know we've got waterfowl uh, behind us uh, unfortunately because yep. you know I think you and I talked at like the last couple weeks it was like I don't know if anybody else at like like is like us out there but um, you know that last couple weeks man you start like it starts getting to be a grind you know oh, yeah I mean, you get tired from the 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 year and and you see birds and then you don't and then you're trying to figure it all out so it was a it was a trying last two weeks but um you know we're past that and now i'm now i'm a little bit sick and want want it back but um, oh yeah but, but you know we've got another bird season coming up here uh and and turkey season's on the horizon and i've got a couple places that i've been that been looking at haven't uh really jumped on scouting yet as of as of the time of this recording but hoping to get a, a long beard down this year and um and so my father-in-law seen a couple up on his farm and and i got another place in oakville there uh that i'm i'm looking at so um how about you you've been seeing any any turkey around well i've you know uh I, I haven't been scouting but i've talked to some people and i've got a i've got a guy at church who's who's become a personal friend of mine he took me out last year turkey hunting and uh we've got scheduled for the first day we're supposed to go out on opening day he doubled last year on opening day and and so i'm looking forward to that we've talked quite a bit about uh going out and, and me and him just really we just had a good time of uh of fellowship and talking and hanging out and uh we called some birds and uh we we ended up we called the hens in and the gobblers stayed away but it was fun you know in the midst of that that happens and that's part of turkey turkey hunting but uh, I, i've seen actually you know uh where we're at in uh southern uh, uh west virginia and in, in virginia area uh we've we've seen um i've actually seen some uh videos of early mating and people are saying like the birds are hammering at in mid-march which is not necessarily a good sign for us because yeah. um we had it, it it's like an early spring has sprung i mean there, we're hitting 70 degree days there's some things happening i mean trees are blooming and then there's a cold front coming behind it but sometimes that pushes the process and so this weather change i'm not sure what it's going to do but it seems like those turkeys are mating early already so yeah. when when we come in it might be a little difficult because they already might be paired up and and you know have already have some hens with them so i know there's a lot of talk about that that they'll leave uh that they'll come off the nest and and do that and that the cold you know will cause some issues and that they'll have to uh you know maybe have another uh, uh, uh breeding period but you know it just seems like it seems like they're gobbling right now i mean they're hammering yeah. of the mornings from what i the people i've been talking which you know is kind of ironic because west virginia finally got on on the same page of of virginia i think we we're usually a week or not if maybe 10 days ahead of you guys um you know on this side and it seems like for me at least it seems like i always do good the first few days and then it you know it's kind of 
it, it teeters out a little bit, but um, you guys finally got on the same page with us, and you're you're on the and, and it might be early, so hopefully it doesn't. I'm sure it will swing back around, but um, you know, for for novice turkey hunters like uh, yourself and, and myself, uh, we might get lucky and and find a nut there uh, uh, soon. Oh, so yeah, find one to maybe fired up and get it get them called in. I say the other thing is too is with the weather, you know, those green briars come out early and the trees start blooming early. So you can, sometimes like in early season, typically you can see a good way and see those turkeys come in. And by week four, you know, there's more uh, foliage out and those mm-hmm. things. So it's like you, you just don't know what's going to happen with that. And so it, it's just part of the process of it all. So yeah, yeah, got to be prepared for for all situations um you know and then shortly after that gonna try to make this work um not sure if i can or not but we've got a a plan to have our annual striper fishing trip and usually for me it's it's a week to 10 days that i'll go um but now i've got more responsibility at home being a dad and um you know obviously want to make sure that I'm doing everything and, and, and all the right things for that. But my wife is, uh, has been kind enough to at least give me the thought that I'm going to go. Right? <laughs> <Right>? So, <laughs> so hopefully uh, if, if things continue to trend the way that, that they are, uh, we're going to, well, I'll be down there, you know, I definitely won't get a week or 10 days, uh, looking at maybe three total on the water. And, um, so we'll, we'll try to get something going there too. But I know that you're, you're planning on being down there with us. Yeah, yeah, I'm going to try to, uh, it looks like my schedule is going to allow for a little bit of that, uh, hopefully get out there and uh, catch some of those skipjack and uh, and uh, hopefully catch some of those stripers breaking like we did last year. We, we had some good moments and uh, and uh, hopefully that, that comes to fruition. I, I, I'm, I, I feel like uh, I've already got the approval um, with my mom. <laughs> with my mom being sick i did i just didn't know what sure. what it what it was going to be so uh there was a little limitation in there but um we're, we're just uh kind of playing it by ear i think both of us are if yeah, we go well, we'll have a great time <laughs> yeah sorry to interrupt there I, I i um you and i have said this all along and and even before your mom was sick and and when my wife was pregnant we uh you know, the one thing that we said is if we're going to give something up, probably be that one. Cause we always, we always like to take the duck trip. I mean, you and I are uh, duck fanatics and, and that one, uh, that one's our time and, and our wives generally give those ones to us. And so if there's one to be, to be left behind, it probably would be that one, but, uh, but we'll, we'll try to make it work. And I've got a new bait tank this year, a super bait tank, and it's a 50 gallon. I actually was, was gifted it by my uncle. And, uh, so that was, uh, that was a nice surprise and we'll try it out and i still i still got to get the boat cleaned up and and things uh uh ready for that and and making sure everything's good it's a it's a massive process when you're when you're looking to go that far and do all those things because you know i mean it's just even the littlest things you you and i talked about it and if if you know somebody didn't hear that episode i can't remember what episode it was but it was back last year had uh, issues with motor had issues with impeller tires everything like everything it could go wrong went wrong and so if i could try to prevent those uh uh things from happening i, I will so i've, I've got to get that on that as well yeah i mean it, it seems like anytime you go even what you experience we experience this even duck hunting it's like you got all this gear but sometimes because it's so tough it, it, it you can have some failure in it you know there's there's my waders failed this year and and you know um things happen they just do they're going yeah, to happen yeah and um so you try to be the best prepared that you can be and from that you know things are still going to go wrong i mean murphy's law murphy's law did seem to happen (laughs) you know what could go wrong did go wrong yeah absolutely and you know now's the time i guess we always kind of give a a fair warning and a reminder to everybody you know get in there make sure that your stuff's getting cleaned up make sure that your stuff's working and operational clean that gun i mean now's a good time to do it um we're getting into the springtime not too hot to get out there and and get some of that done and you know i think um you know you've you have experienced and i'm starting to experience a couple things uh that we're looking at to try to get replaced and you know shot yeah. cam was one of them uh, yeah had some issues there and and your waiters we actually uh you you want to talk about the waiters yeah yeah so so we um we um 
we contacted. I, I had tied wee waders, and uh, and they were fine for two or three years. You know, waders don't last forever. We know that. But uh, yeah, we got with my Molly's and uh, Molly's place, and uh, they, they've uh, they've did some things for us. And so we're gonna we're gonna be rocking some my Molly's waders uh, for edition. Molly's. Yeah. special edition they're frog togs but they're molly's place edition and we're thankful for the partnership and friendship that we've developed with them and it's going to be a uh, uh we're going to rock those this year and uh they seem to be uh comfortable uh yeah. they got plenty plenty of room in them and uh uh we're going to see how those go but they're the the frog tog i think they're the 3.0s is what they yeah, are refuge 3.0s and you know uh I've got, I had a pair of the front zip and those are still good. I mean, you know, I'll, I'm, um, I've got the new pair and, and happy to have that new pair and they look good. They're the solid Browns. Um, I know that's kind of trending right now and sick has got the solid stuff. Um, but it's, it's funny, you, you know, you were talking about Tidewe. I mean, I've got sick of waiters. I've got the, I've got the, the lifelong waiters uh so to speak and you know not to knock on on sitka because we love it you know we we wear it all the time everybody sees it in all of our pictures and stuff but waiters just didn't didn't hold up to where they needed to for me and and part of that i'll I'll be honest part of that might be some of my size and they make their waiters a little bit more slim uh for for somebody like me and just my fit it kind of popped at the seams and things like that so it wasn't you didn't have like the flexibility you would have with with other ones Um, i actually tried on those um frog togs the other day and i definitely had more room in those and but they're more of a traditional built um waiter so you have more room in it more space in it but i love the way they look I, I like the the uh accents of the molly stuff all over it and so i'm i'm excited for that too and and uh you know appreciate you you know working and and, and mending that or or starting to uh help build the get relationship that, get that relationship built and uh so i'm looking forward to that too yeah, they're 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 a great company, and uh, again, visit mymollies.com for any of your waterfowl needs or, or firearm needs. They're in Kearneysville, Maryland, and they they've been a friend to us. And uh, we met them through Jeff Coates and Pit Boss. Kind of introduced us to that. I've bought ammo there, and um, we we've done a lot of things with them so far. And and the partnership with the waiters is is a big deal. We're we're honored to rep them uh, as part of the Bandage Retreat family. Yeah, so that's about all the time we have today. Um, I'll just kind of wrap up with, you know, I, I hope and and pray that you're praying for wisdom out there. Hope that hopefully you guys had a great Easter. Um, we also hope that you you're getting on those turkeys and getting on those fish as we uh, spring into summer here. And so thank you guys always so much for listening. Subscribe if uh, if you get a chance to our YouTube page or follow us on Facebook. Reach out to us if you have any questions. And as always, happy hunting. Thank you.